So let's take a quick look. Uh, unbelievable uh, greatness of, uh, of the characters in the Torah. Let's take a look at Moshe. Moshe is told to speak to a rock and the rock will give water. Moshe hits the rock and God is upset. And God says, because you did this, you will not enter the Holy Land. You will not get to the promised land. You're going to die in the desert and the, and the people will go into, into Israel without you. They will go under the leadership of Joshua. A number of questions. If God said to speak to the rock, how could Moshe hit the rock? Now, the conventional explanation is because years earlier, God had told Moshe to hit the rock. Remember? The first time that the water came from a rock, Moshe was told to hit the rock. This time around, he was told to speak to the rock. Well, he was kind of used to hitting it. <laughs> so he, he kind of fell into the habit of, of hitting rocks. Not a very convincing argument. Oh, he was upset. He was angry. And so, and so he ignored God. How's that for an explanation? <laughs> he listens to God when he's in a good mood. But when he's upset, God speaks to him and he's not listening. Not convincing at all. God speaks to you. You, you listen, especially if your whole life has been devoted to the word of God and so on. And all of a sudden, God says, speak, and he does something else. How is that possible? Another good question is, how does the punishment fit the crime? Because you hit the rock, that's why you can't go into Israel? What, what, what is that? How, how awesome is the punishment compared to the violation? For 40 years, Moshe is preparing the people to enter the land. That's the goal. That's the objective. That's the whole story. And now he's told that he cannot go. That, that's, that's an awesome, awful punishment. What's the connection? See, every punishment is not only commensurate with the sin, it is also of the, of the nature of the sin. The Jews sinned because they demanded beef. They wanted meat. So God said, okay, you're going to have beef until it's coming out of your nose. See, it's a fitting punishment. <laughs> it's sticking to the subject, to the topic. You want meat? The meat is going to make you sick. Seems appropriate. Uh, the Jews sinned and they were bitten by snakes. Now they do tshuva and they have to be cured from the, from the snake. So what does Moshe do? He makes a copper snake, puts it up on a high uh, pole so that for everyone to see, and whoever looks at that copper snake was healed. You see, the healing is related to the illness. Things have to be related. What is the connection between not going into Israel and hitting a rock? And the final question is, if God says you can perform a miracle by speaking to the rock, but he doesn't do that, he hits the rock, why did water come out? It's not like there's water in the rock and anyone who hits it will get water. 
<laughs> it was a huge miracle. Water came out of a rock. Even though Moshe did not do what God said to do. So why did it work? Why did the miracle happen if Moshe was wrong? It shouldn't have worked. So for all these reasons, we need, obviously, a better understanding of the whole event. So here's, here's the beauty of it. It's not just a good explanation. It's also a powerful moral lesson. Moshe describes himself when he reviews the event at Sinai. He says, you were camped at the foot of the mountain. God came down to the top of the mountain and I was there as the um, translator or the communicator. I stood between you and God to bring to you the word of God. So Moshe stands as the bridge between humans and God. Now, when you are that kind of leader, kind of a, a shepherd, the sheep are not yours, not the shepherds, but the, shep the shepherd is responsible for the sheep. So he kind of stands between the flock and its owner because he is neither the sheep nor the owner. He is the one that takes care of the sheep for the owner. And that's why Moshe is called the trusted shepherd. So what does that mean? It means that a leader has two loyalties, one to the people and one to God. The shepherd is devoted to the owner of the sheep, he's also devoted to the sheep themselves, to the flock. Inevitably there will be times when those two devotions will be in conflict, where the shepherd has to decide which way to go. Put the devotion to the owner above the devotion to the sheep or put the welfare of the sheep above the opinion or the desires of the owner. What would the owner of the sheep prefer the shepherd to do? If he's wise, he prefers that the shepherd take care of the sheep. Even if it's against the instructions of the owner. So here's what happened. God says to Moshe, the people are rebellious, they're stiff-necked, they're complainers, they don't listen. So inspire them. Speak to the rock and let them see a rock behave and respond properly to a divine instruction. That will make me look really good and the people will be inspired and they will do what I tell them next time. Here Moshe is in a dilemma. Yes, it will be a kiddush Hashem to speak to the rock and the rock obeys its instructions, which could inspire the, the people to also become a little more responsive or obedient. But it can also be held against them. A rock obeys and you disobey. You're worse than a rock. Talking to you is not like talking to the wall because the wall obeys and you don't. 
So Moshe said, what, what, what am I supposed to do here? If I speak to the rock, God will be very impressive. But it may, may not reflect well on the Jews. So what's my, what's my priority here? And he decided that his priority is with the people. God doesn't need his help. The people need. He also realized that in, in making this decision, he's kind of sealing his fate. If I remain loyal to the people and give them priority over the miracle of, of the obedient rocks, then I am throwing my future in with their future. And whatever happens to them will also happen to me. So if I am with the people, then I go by the people. They are not going to make it into the Holy Land. They're all going to die in the desert, which means so will I. And he decided to hit the rock anyway. And if it means not going into the land, then so be it. So now we have a whole new story. Moshe was not in a bad mood. He was not forgetful. Uh, he wasn't in the habit of hitting rocks. He was a loyal shepherd. And how does the punishment fit the crime? There was no crime. There was the devotion of a shepherd to his flock. Did God complain? Not at all. Isn't that what the shepherd's own, what the sheep's owner would prefer? So then why wasn't he allowed to go into the land? Because his devotion to his people demanded that he remain buried where they are buried. In simple language, Moshe said, they're not going to go into Israel, are they? Well, then I'm not going either. I got to stay with them. The other day we were watching the film uh, Rescue at Entebbe or Th Operation Thunderbolt. Something about the, sto the story of um, the, re the rescue of the hostages in Entebbe by the Israeli uh, army. What happened was an Air France flight going to Israel was hijacked by terrorists. There were about 300 people, 200 and some people on the flight. And after they landed in Uganda, in Entebbe, they freed all the non-Jewish passengers and kept the Jewish ones, who were mostly Israeli. The pilot and the entire staff, the cabin crew, refused to leave. They stayed. They said, as long as a single one of our passengers are staying, we're staying with them. Pretty heroic. They had no idea what their fate would be. So Moshe said, if they don't go, I'm not going. Not in protest, out of loyalty. I'm not going to go enjoy the promised land if I can't bring the people there. So as much as Moshe looked forward, and as much it was, as it was his plan and his ambition and his dream to get to the promised land, his commitment to the people was much stronger. God objects to that? 
No. God loves him for that. There's a very strong statement in the Gemara that when the Jews sinned and God says, I've had it with them, Moshe started to speak and God said to him, who are you? The only reason I need you is to take care of my children. They're not doing well. So who are you? I don't need you. Pretty strong language, huh? If you're not taking care of my children, who are you? That's the feeling of a true leader. It's not about me at all. It's all about the people. That is not conventional wisdom. That's godly talk. If anybody had asked a psychologist or a life coach or any mentor, I tried to bring these people into the land. They're impossible. There were times they were going to kill me because I was getting on their nerves. There's nothing I can do with them. But I didn't do anything wrong, so I'm going to go into the promised land. They're not going to make it, I'm afraid. Is that not reasonable? That's what any human mind would agree with. Yeah, you go. You're, you're a good guy. Why should you not go? So here's the rest of the story. Those Jews who refused to go into the land, and by the way, it was only the men who refused. God said, you don't want to go, then you will never go. You're never going to make it. Wander around in the desert for 40 years until you all die out, and your children and your wives, they will go into the promised land. Now, when God said you're never going to make it, he didn't mean only in that lifetime. It meant that when everybody else will be resurrected and come to the Holy Land permanently, they will not be included. You said no, then it's no forever. They lost their portion in the world to come. However, there's always hope, right? However, since Moshe was buried with them in the same desert, out of loyalty to them, because he would not enter the land without them, well then, how is this going to be resolved? They're never going to come to the land. Will Moshe never come to the land? That doesn't seem right, does it? So the Gemara says, since Moshe is buried with them in the same desert, and he will be resurrected, and he will come to the land, as long as he's coming, they can come with him. Hmm. Not in vain. Did Moshe remain loyal to the end. This too he must have known. There's only one way to get them to the promised land and that is in the resurrection. That I can still do for them. By being buried with them, I will guarantee that they will come along with everybody else when the resurrection happens. In other words, Moshe will not fail. He will bring 
his generation, the people he took out of Egypt, he will bring them to the promised land. Take a few years, okay. Now that is a Bible story. We have a Sunday night program for VIPs that you might be interested in. It's informal, it's questions and answers, it's conversation. It's really relaxed, it's really pleasant, enjoyable, informative, and uh, kind of community-like. It's a Sunday night program, there's a um, Wednesday morning program for the VIPs, and there's a Wednesday night program. All of it, just conversation, casual, laid back, unscripted. So join us, take a look, click uh, the link below and see which, which of the three suits you best and join us for some enjoyable conversation.